Oh my gosh. What a shit show this morning. Something's wrong with my computer. None of my uh, special buttons seem to want to work. So this is going to be off the cuff. Uh, not sure if my audio is even working, if my guitar stuff is working, but whatever. I might not even have a second camera angle to use. Well, hold on, let me just double check. Yeah, it's, nothing's freaking working today. Okay, that's working. That wasn't working. I think I need a new computer. My computer is about six years old now, and Apple likes to uh, slowly um, make it unusable, forcing you to get a new computer, which I'm fine with. I just wish it wouldn't just happen uh, on days like this where I needed to work. Anyways, good morning. How are you? We got a big day today because we have a, a winner of a giveaway that uh, we're going to announce shortly. So thank you all that entered. We got Sammy Rabone, Mickey Settlemeyer, Theo Christie is early. Painkill is here, Billy Baloney, Kevin Kazmai, Terry 3Gs, Rotal Music, Bowden is here. Just got his new Bonamassa 355. That's a good one. I almost bought that one. And the shipping company broke the neck. Holy crap. Luckily the insurance... That sucks. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Um, it, ugh, they should just buy you a new guitar. They shouldn't repair it, you know? Um, that's a really good guitar. I played that at Sweetwater a couple years ago. And I almost bought that one before. I was actually going to buy either that 355 Bonamassa or that uh, Gretsch, which is glowing in the pink light right now. That looks kind of cool. Um, and I ended up buying the Gretsch. But um, yeah, I still want that one. Uh, yes, we are talking about a new trem system on my Strat. Ten Solo is here. Emery, we're going to announce the winner uh, that was sponsored by Ten Solo Music as well as MG Music. Chris R., LPD is here, Ben Coombs, Harley Hex. I'm just scanning. I don't even know how many people are here. That's that's how messed up my system is. Like, I have no idea who's here. At least the chat's working, at least one camera's working, and at least the uh, microphone is working. Kirk R., my wife thinks your intro music is boring. That's fine, because I didn't write it. Um, I put the, actually, who... Uh, uh, who composed that piece of music? It's down in the description. I forget who it is. Audio and camera are good. Thank you, Chris R. Um, Ariel Posen is here. Ariel Posen, if you just chat, if you just chimed in, uh, my stream is going to suck today because my computer, which is a six-year-old Mac, iMac, is giving me problems today. And the and the worst thing is, and Brad Pop is here, and Ben Tom is here. Hello, guys. The worst thing is, I tested this all out. I had it all set up last night. Everything was working perfectly. And then I turned it on this morning and Ecamm won't even start up. I had to restart my computer three times. Um, and even now it's not even working the way it should. So, I don't know. I'm holding out for the new IMAX. Have you seen the new IMAX? They're, they're coming in different colors, but apparently it's a whole different uh, redesign. Like it's a whole brand new redesign. Um, where it just looks totally different. I don't know, new silicon chip or something. So I might just hold out for that. Uh, maybe, maybe this spring or summer. I don't know. Teresa's here. My sister's here. Pooh Ninja. Uh, how, ben Coombs, we're going to do this old school. Tell me how many people are in the chat because I have no idea how many people. I don't have my screen that shows it to me because it's... And I can't uh, press any of my cool sound effects. Yeah, it doesn't want to seem to work. It's my computer. Um, so, it's because it's an Apple product. Yeah, that's how they get you. It works. I can tell you that it worked great for five years with barely any kind of issues. And as soon as I upgraded to the new operating system, Big Sur, that's when it all went to crap. Everything. It's slower. Uh, having more problems with Logic and Final Cut and Ecamm and all, all my peripherals don't work. And that's how they do it. 
they make you update to a, a, an operating system and then it uh, screws out the older computer so you're forced to buy a new one. Which they do with iPhones and, and all iPads and all their products. That's how they stay in business. I get it. I'm not, I'm not whining about that. I'm just wishing that they wouldn't make it uh, crash on when I have to work or, or stream. Like right before a stream. So, anyways, there's my rant for the day. I think we should get started. Uh, we should brighten up the, uh, the stream and announce the giveaway. What do you think? Hopefully this will work because I filmed... Um, so the contest was for the MG Music Parliament pedal, which the fine folks at MG Music have also... Ooh. Uh, thrown in a t-shirt, two mugs, and this uh, custom fuzzy lined carrying case. Which a lot of the MG Music pedals come with a custom fuzzy carrying case. But this is extra big. So you could actually use this, re, you could reuse this box for other things as well. But anyway, uh, I think we had something like 872 entries, which is great. Um, and I picked the winner last night before bed so I could announce it today. And I actually filmed, oh, we got a super chat from Chris R. Guess what, Chris R? I don't have the thank you screen I gotta manually do it since my buttons don't work. And I'm not even sure if the uh, Mr. Taco is gonna show up. But um, if it does, congratulations. Um, we got Marsman. There it is, Mr. Taco. Thank you so much. Thank you for being number one in the Taco Fund race. And Chris R. You guys are, you guys are saints. Thank you. We're starting the Taco Fund. If you want me to see your question or your comment really, really bad, you can send a super chat, which my friends Chris R. and uh, Marsman have done, and you get a, a Mr. Taco and a thank you and a shout out, and I'll answer your question. Um, or you can highlight my name or tag me by hitting the at symbol, R period, J period. Ryan Kilio, that's my name. That's why you're here. Um, okay, let's do this. I filmed the uh, actual drawing, screenshotted it, so hopefully this works. With some nice bossa, Nova. And the winner of the MG Music Parliament pedal is Will. Gustafson. Will Gustafson right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, congratulations. I don't have the uh, applause sound effects, do I? I have the... That's, that's the best I could do without my buttons. So congratulations, Will Gustafson. If you're here, say hello. If not, uh, I'll be contacting you via email today. Uh, and sending your info to uh, MG Music and Ten Solo, so they can send you the uh, your gift, the pedal, the two mugs, and the uh, the T-shirt. So congratulations to Will. Um, Chris R loves the lobby music. It's a really nice bossa nova. I just found it uh, on the Epidemic website. Is Will here? If if Will is here. Uh, tag me at RJ Ron Kilio so I can see your comment. Uh, if not, uh, I'll email you. By the way, I am drinking some AeroPress coffee today. It's delicious. I finally had, I finally made the time to make a real good coffee. Shade Hope. With the thank you, can I do this? I'll just have to use uh, quick keys, I guess. Um, Shade Hope, I appreciate your super chat. Let's see what Ariel said. You could plug into a shoe and record with your phone and still sound great. I agree. When did he say that? Ariel Posen said that? I don't believe it. 
I think uh, Ariel and I should do a collaboration where we actually plug into or, you know, use random household items to make music and see if we can uh, make some good music. We always get those comments, uh, you know, uh, you could make a rubber string and a toilet sound good or something. And actually, a couple years ago, I got a comment that said, uh, you could you could make a, a fart sound good. And then I actually made a video of me uh, making a fart sound good. I, I sampled it and tuned it and, and, and mod, you know, adjusted the uh, the waveform so it almost sounded like a synth tone and I made music out of it. It wasn't my fart. It was a fart I downloaded uh, from a website. It was a, a an, an electronic fart. AI fart. Anyways, uh, today... I'm sorry, um, Ben, I didn't see how many people you stated. 275, Ben Tom, thank you. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, an upgrade that I did to my Strat. And some of you guys may know about this company and some of you guys uh, were talking about this in the chat earlier. But... Where is my zoom? Can this zoom? So, I don't know if you can really see it. I got a new tremolo from the folks at Vega Trem. Vega Trem, I believe, is in Barcelona, Spain. I think they're in Barcelona. Um, and they sent over a Vega Trem. I think some of you guys were asking me to demo it, or um, some of you were telling me to check it out. Anyways, they reached out uh, and were very kind and generous to send me one to test out. This is, I think, their, their normal VT1 or whatever it's called. But, um, perfecto de Castro, como esta? Your fart would sound more organic. <laughs> okay, no more fart talk. No more toilet humor this early. Um, so yeah, Vega Trim. I had no idea what this was all about. I knew that they were saying that it's uh, a different feeling Strat Tremolo. So it basically fits in a normal Strat cavity, whether you have a six screw or a two uh, pin tremolo, strat tremolo. Uh, they make ones for both kinds of holes. <laughs> but um, the idea, and I had to kind of look up what the whole, what their spiel was, is it's almost like having a Floyd Rose without the enormous, you know, hardware and the locking nut. So it's, they said it's supposed to feel like the uh, a Floyd Rose, and I'm going to test it with you and tell you guys what I think. But I just wanted to show you how easy this was to uh, install. And I installed this on my my favorite Strat, which is the uh, Sen Fullerton Strat. This is my favorite Strat. And I, you know, I have a bunch of Strats that I could have put it in uh, just to test it out. But, you know, I wanted to test it out on my on my favorite one, my, the one that I love. Um, and I'll tell you, there's a, there is a difference. And we'll talk about that in a second. But I did want to show you the video of me installing it because I filmed the video of me installing it. And guess what? It's got the same freaking music. Because I love bossa novas. So that's what it looks like. It's got a really interesting uh, block. It's kind of like a beveled block. They send you also different tension springs. I chose the medium ones because I'm using 10 to 46 gauge. So you yeah, just remove the old one. You install this bracket, you pop it in. Uh, it's kind of like an edge system, kind of like a Floyd Rose. Um, and to tell you the truth, the way I set it up is very similar to the way I would set up a Floyd Rose. It kind of feels like a Floyd. And it kind of feels like a Floyd. And I didn't really edit it this it's well. It's not even in tune yet and set up, but uh, I guess I gotta float it. So we floated it. And um, basically, uh, there wasn't any directions that came in the box 
everything was pointing to the YouTube, which is cool. It's like to, you know, to learn how to install it, go to our, our YouTube uh, website, our YouTube channel, and that's where you just watch videos. And, you know, Daryl Braun had a video as well, and I watched that on how to install. It's really easy to install, and I, you know, I'm not the greatest repair person. Um, I think it, the whole, the installation took maybe like 10, 15 minutes, but I spent more time setting it up because I wanted to set it up perfectly. And the way they suggested setting it up um, on their YouTube video was just kind of tune it to pitch and then play around with the springs. It was kind of general, uh, but the way I set it up was the way I set up a Floyd, which is, since it, since it is supposed to be floating, and I'll talk about the mechanics of this in a second. Since it is designed to be floating, uh, I don't know, let's see here. So, so it's designed to be floating. The way I did it is I set it so the trim is parallel or flush with the body, totally flat, and then I blocked it using these things, which I highly suggest. It's kind of a stupid idea. This is called the Trem Wedge. I think you can get this on Amazon, but it's basically four different blocks that are uh, kind of, you know, have this bevel so you can stick them in the cavities of, of the Trem to keep it from moving uh, anywhere which is what you want to do when you set up a floating tremolo or a Floyd Rose tremolo. You want to block it off so it doesn't move. Tune to pitch. Tune the guitar to pitch. So it's essentially it's like a hardtail. Tune to pitch and then you take the blocks off and then um, at that point your trem will probably go out of whack. And then you want to adjust the tuning by playing with the screws in the claw, kind of moving the trem that way. And then it should be perfectly in tune and perfectly floating. So I do highly suggest these, as, as silly as they are, it's just pieces of wood, which you could probably make yourself, but these are kind of designed in a way that it fits in the cavities of the, of the trem perfectly. Um, and it's, I'll tell you what, it worked last night. I don't know if it's gonna work tonight. Let's see, can I get some sound? <laughs> Is there sound coming through, maybe? So, I mean, it's hard to tell through sound what it feels like. I can tell you this much, it does feel like a Floyd. Like I can do the warbles. Which is kind of, you can kind of get that with a normal uh, Strat bridge if you float it, but then when you float, the thing is when you float, uh, Strat bridges, they end up like going like, you know, the, they end up angling up like that because the way that it's designed, it's a, a normal Strat bridge is flush with the body. So when you float it, it has to be angled up and that's kind of, it's fine. I mean, Jeff Beck does that. Um, it kind of looks awkward and that's not the way the Strat was designed. Strat bridge was designed for, but the way this is designed for, and which kind of freaked me out when I first opened it, is I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's considerably shorter than a regular Strat bridge to the point where you can actually see the 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 hole of the regular uh, Strat bridge, and that kind of freaked me out because I'm like, whoa, it's not covering up, you know, the the normal uh, trem hole. Anyways, I installed it. <clears throat> wow, I need some water. Excuse me. That was a Pete Brady move. Uh, so I installed it, and then I figured out, well, it's designed so when you pull back, it goes, it actually goes into the, uh, the original trem hole so that it is, so you can float it while it's uh, parallel, so, which is a cool idea. 
And I can actually, I mean, I can pull this up a perfect fourth, which is uh, five frets. Almost a perfect fourth. About a third. It stays in tune decent. So it doesn't do the Brad Gillis thing where it warbles when you hit the bar, which is kind of good because that means it's a little more stable than a Floyd Rose. But if I wanted to do the warbly, and what I'm gathering, it's very um, responsive, overly responsive to the touch, where if I just touch it, it's very sensitive, which you can adjust by changing the springs because they came with like three different tension springs. So depending on how you have the setup, I'm actually tuned down a half step with 10 gauge strings. So that, make, that might make a difference. But one of my tests that I always do, stop hitting my strat. Um, 10 solo, did I lube the nut? Yes, I actually put some lube on the saddles. I always lube the saddles and the nut whenever I change strings on every guitar anyways. So the test that I like to do on floating tremolos is my, my sleepwalk test, where I actually just play, you know, the, the melody to sleepwalk the way that I like to do it. I, this is maybe like the way Jeff Beck does it, but it's like... Just that lick. yesterday so um, another lick that I'll do is like And it passes those tests for me, um, which I really like. Now, there are some caveats with this. There are some caviars with this. Um, one thing I noticed, and I don't have the other bridge handy, the original bridge that this came with, that Jeff put in, had a very nice trem block. It was super heavy, a lot of sustain, um, and you know, if I, if you weighed the, the, the two, the Vega trem and my original Strat trem with the block, my original was way heavier. And I can te definitely tell the difference with sustain, uh, and tone. With this, the Vega trem, it's not as bad, with Floyd Rose trem lows for the most part, you do lose a lot of sustain just because the way that it's you know, set up, it's blocked uh, in the saddle as opposed to running through a big trem block um, and all that stuff. Now you can buy aftermarket trem blocks from like FU Tone and stuff that do make a little bit of a difference, um, but it's still not the same as, you know, string through the body, going through this huge trem block and getting strung up. So um, while this is technically kind of through the body, um, the block is definitely, Thinner. Uh, where's my camera? This one. I don't know if you can see, but the the block the it's considerably thinner, which might be designed just to have a little bit of that lightness, so it feels light to the touch. Um, so it's an interesting design, 
but I can definitely hear a tonal difference between this and my original uh, tram, which it's not a deal breaker to me because I, I truthfully like the way this feels more uh, and it stays in tune pretty good, but I can definitely hear, especially when I'm playing just through a clean amp, um, there is a difference with sustain that I'm hearing. But it's definitely not a, a deal breaker for me. Some people it might be. Uh, another thing is, the um, this is like a modern setup, so the, the trem arm feels definitely modern. It feels like a Floyd Rose trem arm, which to me, I actually prefer the feel of the old school thinner trem arms with the, the plastic little tip. Um, that's just me, that's a feel thing. And I like the angle of the arm a little bit lower. This is pretty hot, you know, this is a pretty uh, strong angle, which is fine, because that's, you know, for... I mean, it's, I guess it's made to sound like a, a Floyd, right? Or to feel like a Floyd. Um, but it would be cool if they made an option to get like a vintage style trem bar. Not just for the feel, but also for just the look. Because, you know, this is a vintage looking uh, Strat. And, you know, with a modern bar, it looks kind of off. But that being said, it does feel good. And it's actually staying in tune better today than it was last night. Now, um, somebody had mentioned that, or actually a buddy of mine mentioned that um, there's another, there's a, an American company called uh, Super V that does a similar design, which I haven't demoed at all, and I'm not sure if there's a, a difference. I want to say just by looking at it, I think the, the Super V, and if anyone actually owns one of the Super V trams, uh, it seems to me that the Super V might actually be the same size as a regular Fender a trem, so it's not set up the same way as the, the Vega trem where it actually goes into the gap of the cavity of the, uh, the uh, trem route, which I'm not sure. Maybe some of you guys can tell me. But that's another trem that I wouldn't mind checking out. <clears throat> but as for now, I'm going to keep this on here. This is, uh, it's fun. Where's all my picks? Oh, here they are. I actually have a pick container for once. Put on the LPD-87. in tune but considering I did a lot of a lot of uh, aggressive wanking there somebody's saying uh, Ethan Ricks just got the Super V it seems pretty different than this uh, who else got the Super V let's see here yeah so I this guitar does not have locking tuners it doesn't have a graphite Nut. This is bone nut, vintage style tuners. Um. And it stays in tune pretty good. I mean, if you lubricate the nut and the saddles, I should have probably lubricated the, the string tree as well, which I might do later. Um, you should be good to go. It 
needs to be tuned, but we knew that. Um, and plus these are brand new strings, which I didn't really stretch out. I didn't have time to really stretch them out as, as well as I could have. Oh, we got a, a super chat. Hold on. I see you out of the corner of my eye. Music therapy, Laz. Thank you. Doing my first mod to my blacktop strap. And this might be the bridge. And this bridge br might be the thing I need. Yeah, man, check it out. Um, s some people were saying last stream that um, when I had the Super Strat, the RS Guitar Works Super Strat, with the Floyd, people were saying, I wish they made, you know, something better than a Floyd for Strats or something. It's been 40 years or something. And um, I think these are, this is going in the, the right direction because it's kind of a blend of vintage and modern. It, I can definitely say that this feels Floydish to me and being, I, I don't know if I'd be a connoisseur of Floyd Rose Trems, but um, I like it. I like this trem. I rarely uh, pull up on the bar, but I think I, I will start with you know, because of this trim. I mean, that's a minor third. Now, if it did like the Steinberger trans trim thing, I would put this on all of my guitars. But it doesn't. I don't think it's possible to. It's interesting if you do the, like the double stop thing and you have this, the trem set up just right where it actually stays in tune. So it seems like the third string will go up a whole step and the second string will kind of go up a half step. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's, it's close enough. So this is the Vega trim. Uh, you can just Google them because I don't have a link ready for you, but uh, Vega trim from Spain. Very, very cool product. Thank you for uh, letting me check it out, y'all. Um, any questions? Let me know. Uh, there's a couple things. Oh, yeah. So I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to... Uh, wean myself off a of coffee a little bit. Not completely, but just not every day. So every morning, and this is not an ad, but I've been talking about this on Instagram, and I've been buying these things called Dr. D's Sparkling Probiotic. See, now my computer just shut off. Well. Nope. Oh, some of the buttons work, never mind. Very interesting. Uh, not the ones that I want to work. Zoom. Spark, uh, Dr. D's Sparkling Probiotic. So I was like a big kombucha. You've seen me drink kombucha on the live stream before. I wanted something different. And this has actually been really good. And um, I actually have been in contact with them. So hopefully in the future you'll be seeing more of these. 
But if you're into something that's not uh, soda, pop, as we call it in Michigan, um, like this is kind of a replacement for, for drinking sodas to me, which is also something that I enjoy once in a while. I like to drink root beer, but um, this, what is the sugar content? This is uh, about 15 grams of sugar in one can, 12 ounce can. It's not horrible. It's not, you know, as good as having no sugar, but it's it tastes good. Anyways, I've been drinking one of these every morning, as well as coffee. So at one point, at some point, I'm gonna have to not drink the coffee and just drink that and maybe some regular water. Chris R has it right. Scratch the taco fund today, guys. We need to buy RJ a computer. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm saving up my, my pennies because I know this year I'm going to have to buy a new computer. I've already pre-planned it. I'm just waiting for the right one because uh, I know they're coming out with new ones and um, I would rather get the... Uh... Oh, my God. Ben Tom. Thank you for posting the Dr. D's website. Marsman, good question. Whatever happened to Hint Water? Uh, I got crickets. I don't, I don't, I can't remember if I reached out to them. I'm sure I reached out to them through their website, but I didn't hear anything back. And, um, there's another big YouTuber named Sarah Dietschy, who I don't know if you've heard of, but she's actually a guitar player, but she's, uh, most known for, uh, tech, tech vlogging and, and reviews and all that stuff. She, I believe she had a, a Hint Water deal and she was giving away pallets of hint water that they had given her. I guess she she moved from New York City back to, to Dallas or something, and she was selling off a bunch of stuff and giving off giving away stuff. And I remember seeing a post where she was giving away, like, packs and packs of hint water. I'm like, oh, must be nice. Um, but, yeah, the thing about hint water, and I think I've reached out to them, it's like I wish they made them in, in bigger bottles because those little bottles don't really last very long for me. Like I wish they made like a, a 22 ounce one or something. Cause I don't want to waste all that plastic regardless. Anyways, but yeah, Dr. D's hit me up. I think we, uh, we spoke a little bit and, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more. And this is something that like I bought just on a whim. I went to the Publix grocery. I think you can get these at Publix if you live in the Southeast region. But uh, I just bought these because I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. And I, I drank it and I'm like, this is really good. So I started buying more of them. I'm like, you know what? Let me reach out to them just for fun. Or let me post something on Instagram and tag them. And then I'll reach out to them and whatever. And um, we made contact and hopefully something will come out of it. Uh, I got some other stuff to talk about today, but I'll also answer some of your questions. Scott Brockway. That's a cool name. Does the bar itself have any play in it? If you're talking about play where it moves without adjust, without uh, moving the, the actual trim, there's zero play. I mean, I, I, if you just joined, I was saying that this is very sensitive. Like if I just touch it, It's very, there's no extra play like you would get with a, with a, a screw-in bar. Yeah, it's super sensitive, which some people don't like. I like it. I think, I'm not sure if, um... If Jeff Beck uses this or, or a Super V or a different kind of bar, but I think he would really like this. What do I know? I don't know Jeff Beck. Actually, I did meet him twice, but... Uh, Dave Rustad, thank you so much. Mr. Taco has disappeared because of your, your greatness. For the computer... 
You guys are very kind. For the computer, the tacos, for chill Saturday mornings. Also get your hands on a Greer Mini Chief, if you can. Smallest amp that will ever melt your face, even more so than probiotic drinks. The Mini Chief, okay. I think um, I might have a contact that knows a contact at Greer, so maybe I will request that on my next uh, round of demos. Thank you for that. Um, where's my list of things I wanted to talk about? Oh yeah! I don't have a picture of this. Have you guys seen that new um, Chase Bliss Zvex collab pedal for the uh, new pedal movie? Um, I know Red Shell bought it, and um, I I saw the video that my buddy Mason Stoops did, and I was like, "This is a well." I knew Mason Stoops would make a good video. He's a, a great guitar player, and um, but the pedal was actually really really interesting. I mean, and I don't own any Zvex. Oh no, I own some Zvex pedals. I don't any own any Chase Bliss pedals. I've never tried any of their stuff. Um, but this was probably the first one that I was actually interested in getting. And you know, it was only a limited run. And um, the day that it went on sale, I, I went to Reverb. I had it in my cart. I'm like, you know what? Let, let me just sleep on it, wait a day. You know, I saw that Rhett had purchased it. I'm like, ah, I should probably buy it, but I'm gonna wait a day just to see where, we're at, where it's at. Next day, what do you know? It's all sold out. So, just goes to show you, if the opportunity comes, just buy it. That's what, that's what my mom used to say. Just buy it. Um, well, we have Joe Rosmanasa in the chat. I did upgrade my Fender Custom Shop Strat with Wood Tone CP50 Vibrato Unit, okay. I've never heard of that, but I'm going to Google them at some point. So yeah, I don't have... I didn't buy the pedal. I missed out. Rhett has it, so uh, be on the lookout for a demo from Rhett. Bent Tom, my good buddy from college. $10 from Bent Tom, because you tried to teach me and Chris Young to surf on South Beach. Until you smacked your eardrum with the board. Oh, we can talk about that, that Bent Tom. <clears throat> so if you guys didn't know, me, Bent Tom, we, uh, we met in college in the 90s in the University of Miami. We were both actually music engineering majors, and I dropped out and I switched to jazz guitar. But um, we had a group of friends, and the first year we were there, so we lived uh, in Coral Gables, Florida, which is basically suburban Miami, um, about 10 minutes from the beach, from South Beach, 15 minutes, 20 minutes with traffic. Um, and at the time I was surfing a lot because I had just moved from a college in Northern Florida in St. Augustine um, and I went down to Miami and I didn't have anyone to surf with. So I took Tom and, I, and our friend Chris we rented surfboards, or they rented surfboards from a shop kind of by, by school. And then I took them to the South Beach. And it was during a period where there was a hurricane or a tropical storm offshore. So if you've ever seen the waves in Florida when there's a storm or a hurricane you know, coming, depending on where you're at, sometimes they're really nice. And sometimes it's just so windy and blown out that it's... It's extremely dangerous. And that was one of those days. It was like, I probably shouldn't have taken you guys out. I probably shouldn't have gone out because um, I remember getting up on one wave that was just closing out and the board came up and at some point it had smacked me in the ear, in the head. And the force of that smack, whether it was water or, or air being pushed, I actually perforated my eardrum. So um, this is probably within the first three months of school. I'm just starting music school and my my career at that point depended on my hearing because I was a music engineering major. Uh, so that was kind of a, an intense situation. 
Um, it didn't. It didn't hurt. It just felt like there there was something in my ear that was, you know, impeding my hearing. So I was fine for a couple of days, and I said, you know what, something's wrong. So I went to the ENT, and they told me that I had perforated my eardrum. Yada yada yada. Um, I think we just let it heal on its own. I can't remember what they did, but I remember they had to stick a bunch of things in my ear, and it was really painful. But that's the story. So, uh, when you go surfing in a hurricane, make sure you wear uh, earplugs or earmuffs or something. I don't know. That's the moral. Kenny Nieves. I don't have my thank yous ready. Where are you, Kenny? No. No. There you are. Kenny Nieves is another friend from South Florida. I got a lot of South Florida friends coming in today. Kenny, is there a certain way how you tie your strings at the headstock, especially since you have no locking tuners on this strat to help stay in tune better? Uh, hope you're doing well. Buddy, how are you, man? Is there a certain way how I tie my strings at the headstock? No. So these, uh, where's my zoom? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Come on, all I want to do is zoom a zoom. You can't really see. Let's do this camera angle. Can you see this? Maybe better. So on this Strat, these are like vintage style. Um, they actually, I don't even know what these are, Clusons or something, but you can't tell maybe that they're, they're kind of tiered up. So the, the higher strings are lower than the, uh, the wound strings, which I believe I probably don't need the string tree because of this design, but we have it anyways, just for the look. Um, so this is vintage style. So with these, all you do is, you know, you uh, pull the string and uh, I usually cut it maybe two or two and a half posts past the, uh, the intended post. So if I pull the low E string, I measure out to about here, snip it, just slide it in and, and wind it up. And that's, that's why I love, uh, slotted tuners, vintage style tuners on basically every guitar, whether it's a Gibson style or a Fender style. I think my Novo has them. They're just convenient to me. Um, I like them as much as locking. I probably like them more than locking tuners just because it doesn't really bother me that extra step of pre-snipping the string and then winding it. That doesn't bother me. But this definitely feels like it's locked in more than just the, the hole through the post. I hate those tuners for some reason now. Staggered tuners. Thank you, Ben. What did I say? Tiered? Staggered. So uh, that's it. There's, they're, they're not really special, but they're, I want to say they're Clusons. They don't say anything. But it's whatever Mr. Jeff Sen likes to use on his guitars. Uh, Justin Burkett. Got some questions I'm going to answer. Thoughts on the Duesenberg multi-bender bridge. I, I love the way that, uh, um, why can't I think of it? Seth Lee Jones uses it. I've never tried it, so I can't really uh, make any remarks on it. I would love to try it. Uh, who else uses it? I think Bukovac has one. But Seth Lee Jones is the guy that I think of. Oh, we got a super chat. And Mr. Taco, thank you so much for... Vincent Primavera, I appreciate that. I hope you're enjoying the chat from wherever you're at. Um, Bowden, here we go. In relation to the uh, your broken guitar, you have a relevant question, and it's very valid. What's the best aftermarket guitar case for a 335 that can handle gigging and travel? Um... To tell you the truth, just get a gig bag. Um, get a really high quality gig bag. Um, that's either mono case, but I actually prefer Reunion Blues. Um, if you want to get a hard case, you could spend the money, but if you're going to be traveling, uh, I almost feel like a gig bag is a little bit more manageable. The Reunion Blues stuff is probably the best ones. I used mono gig bags for years, you know, on the road. 
but I feel like the the reunion blues ones have a little more stability and are a little um, firmer. Um, that being said, I don't have a 335 gig bag. Um, one of my friends, my old boss in Thompson Square, he had a, a mono 335 gig bag. It was fine, but uh, I like the construction of the Reunion Blue stuff more. So look into that. And I'm pretty sure they make a 335 sized one. But get the one that's like the expensive model. Because I know they make um, more budget friendly ones, but those are going to be thinner and less rigid. You want the one that's going to be the most rigid. I think there's like a a neck rest and all that stuff. Chris Post, do I miss the ocean living in Nashville? Absolutely. Um, after I moved, after I lived in Florida, I moved to California. So um, that was a, a good move because I was still able to go surfing and, and be by the ocean. Uh, and then since then, you know, we moved to Chicago and now Nashville. And um, I haven't seen the ocean in years. Um, where's my thingy? There's something else. Oh, yeah. So we were talking about my... Oh, I don't have the picture anymore. What did we call my pedal boards again? The smorgasbord. So um, we all know how, um, how messy all my cables are. And I was just like sitting here one day working and I'm like, this is awful. This is such an eyesore. Um, and actually I think it's affecting the, my tone of, you know, all of the, cabling that's going through with all these multiple pedal boards. It's kind of a mess, but at the same time, it's probably not set up optimally. So I was kind of chatting with our friend Mason over at Vertex. Um, Tito, Tito Marangella. Is he here? Probably not. And uh, I kind of made the decision that I'm going to actually re-cable everything. Not, not necessarily the cables on the, the pedal boards just yet, but you know, I have 20 feet cable running from a board that only really needs to be 10 feet of cable, maybe even six feet of cable. So I'm going to pull a Mason Marangella and I bought a loom of uh, Mogami, what is this? 20 something, Mogami 29, Oh my God, I'm getting old. 23, 14 cable, <laughs> which I think was uh, the favorite cable of Vertex and like in the shootout video that we did. Um, I got a loom of this. I got a bunch. This is from Performance Audio. And then I got a bunch of connectors. I got some pancake ones. And I got some uh, mini plug straight ones. These are the ones that, that that Mason uses. These I got from Bestronics, BTPA, uh, and I'm going to uh, rewire basically uh, the smorgasbord so it's uh, running uh, as optimal as it can be. And plus, hopefully, it'll be uh, less spaghetti-like. I mean, it's it's a mess. It's, I, I'm looking at it. Can I show it to you guys? I don't think I can. If you want to bear with me, I might be able to pull it up uh, via my remote phone if this thing would work. Let's see here. Arthur Gonzalez, thank you. Sorry, I just missed your, your chat. I'm not ignoring you, I promise. Where are you? If you get a chance and want to upgrade your Bigsby to keep them in tune, check out Bricks Bigs Fix. I swear mine is so killer now. I don't know how the old school guys kept theirs in tune. That's good to know because uh, my Gretsch, so far it's been so pretty good. It doesn't go out of tune too bad, but if there's something that really 
helps them stay in tune. Uh, I'll check it out. Bricks Bigs Fix. I have no idea what that is. But uh, anyone else know what Briggs Bigs, Bigs Fix is? Roller bridge makes a huge difference with the Bigs B. Um, yes, I don't think that has a roller bridge. That's just like old school, uh, which I don't mind. Let's see if I can get this camera. Uh, um, where are you, Epic Cam now? Nope, not working. I don't know, I didn't expect it to work. Does it ever work? No. Does anything ever work in my system on days where I need it to work? No. Mm -hmm. Nope. Work. Anyways. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do in the next couple months or so. Um, and then something else. Oh yeah, I got a new pedal that I'm really jazzed about. Um, I got one of these. So, oh man. I got an Analog Man Beano Boost. What is this, you may ask? This is Analog Man's version of a kind of a Clapton Blues Breakers era treble booster, which I guess I can plug it in somewhere. Let me uh, let me do this. Maybe this might not be optimal, but we'll see. Um, and I'll show you what it does, because it, it does something special. Hopefully it'll work. I got my 54 reissue. It makes it really nasally which I like. So here's without it. Here's with it. That's just a boost going into the front end of my, my steel string Sultan, which is supposed to stay pretty clean. Yes, David Rustad, good point. There are general claims that Clapton didn't use one or it was just the amp on the Beano record. I think, however, that he should have used one. Good point. It's, who knows? I mean, his, his Marshall amp could have been modded in a way that sounded like this, but. But there's three settings, kind of uh, mid-range settings, or gain settings. This one has more of the lows. Mike Wagliar does it get less nasal as you roll off the volume. I think it does, hold on. Maybe it's less prominent or something. <laughs> Jay 
Mike Jones didn't clap and use his signature Digitech Crossroads pedal on everything. I remember that. Didn't they make a hen they had they made a Hendrix wall looking one as well? It's, it definitely sounds better if it's just guitar, Beano boost into the amp. I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that it's going through. But it definitely has this character that I can't get from any of the other pedals that I have. I kind of tried getting it with my uh, Boss EQ pedal that was modded by XTS. Um, and it gets close, but this is, this is definitely something special. <laughs> running the Beano into a mid overdrive pedal. I think where it's at in my pedal board, I can't really do that right now. Just because all my mid overdrives are, are stuck to my board. And this is just kind of hanging off to the side. <laughs> Albert Bouchard, have I ever noticed that amps sound different in your particular Marshalls? Uh, I believe so. I'm trying to remember. The only time I ever used a Marshall in the UK was years ago and um, it was so distorted. I mean, I said it's so distorted that I really couldn't tell the difference. But uh, I believe so because I would think that the voltages are so different that, you know, they would sound a little bit, you know, there'd be a little bit of a difference. <laughs> Kasim, what's my favorite fuzz pedal? Fuzz style pedal or my actual favorite brand? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I probably fuzz faces are my favorite and you know, I have a bunch of them. Uh, my favorite one, I don't know, let's try them out. Let's make the decision right now because I have two favorites that are hooked up right now. So that is the uh, the King Tone Germanium Fuzz. I guess we should get the proper guitar for this. You know, you know, let's pull the old RS, twist it out. Since we're doing a fuzz face thing. There's that one, the King Tone. And then there's this one, which is, ooh. Wow. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. That's the cable. That's a George L's cable, y'all. Don't do that. I think that's the cable. <laughs> this 
This is a um, West Jeans Texas Fud Fuzz. It's his fuzz face. It's the custom one that was Ron Tilio painted. It's a silicon fuzz. <laughs> Then here is the uh, King Tone Germanium fuzz. They're very similar. I do feel like the germanium fuzz is a little smoother and is more reactive. Uh, it's more sweeter when you play with the uh, the volume knob. That could just be, you know, an inherent thing with between germanium and silicon. But um, I don't know. I like them both. And the trick is to put an overdrive after the uh, the fuzz faces. To smooth them out a little bit, so I have this um, J Rocket 45. Oh, that was interesting. So that's the Beano Boost. Let me turn it down a little bit. That sounds weird. That's not gonna work, you know why? Because the Beano Boost actually has germanium transistors in it as well. So it's gonna react a little bit like a fuzz pedal when you put other things in front of it. I think the uh, silicon transistors have a little more sizzle to me. Germanium is usually always smoother. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like whatever your taste is. I like them both for certain things. Um, so yeah. In other news, and I'm sorry uh, if I missed any super chats. So a lot of people, some of you out there maybe do this, but um, a lot of players um, like to use the shoulder of a regular guitar pick. What I mean is, and I will show it to you using this guitar pick. This is a very famous person's guitar pick. This is a Tom Bukovac signature Jim Dunlop medium and um, I believe he as well as Ford Thurston and Guthrie like to use the uh, the shoulder of the pick the, uh, the the more rounded tip of the uh, of the pick which I do too on occasion not all the time but <laughs> To me, and I've, I've spoken about this in the past, that it's it's more about the feel to me. There is a tonal difference, but once you start, you know, electrifying it and putting, you know, overdrives into stuff, you don't really hear a tonal difference. Uh, but it's more about a feel thing because it, it's since it's so rounded, it kind of just glides across the strings, which can be good. But at a point, there's a point where you can't you know, really pick as accurately and fast when it's that round. So it's only good for certain things. And I've been experimenting with that a little bit. And I actually, you know, instead of just repurposing a regular pick and using, you know, the, the, the shoulder of it, which wasn't the intention, they actually do make picks kind of in that shape 
which I have a couple here. This is from a company called Golden Gate, which they make a bunch of thumb picks, but this is kind of like uh, a mandolin pick or something. I don't know if you can really see it. This is a, a medium gauge, which I haven't, I haven't measured it with my caliper, but that's like, that's like a fender medium. And then they have stiff, which is kind of like a heavy. So this is probably like, oh, I don't know, 0.7 and, and maybe like a 0.8 or something. Uh, but they also have this one, which is a, a Dunlop Prime Tone. I don't know if you've ever seen these picks. Um, and the funny thing with this is, <laughs> you can't really tell, but the the bottom tip, the main tip is actually a lot rounder than the sides. Um, but I've actually found myself using the shoulder of this one as well, because it's a little bit, um, has a little bit of a point, which I like. And um, I actually like this. It really feels good. If I'm just playing normally, you know, medium tempo, slower lines. Licks like that feel really good. Like these really simple kind of sweep. But if I was trying to do something like really technical and, and fast, I don't know. It's a little, it's not as, um, attacky as it should be. Whereas if I get like a, a sharper pick like this one from um, Hawk. There's more attack there and you can hear it. Whereas if I try to play that same speed with one of these rounder edges, you're gonna, it's gonna get lost. There's, there's no volume there. So at some point, you can't really use the rounded tips for everything. But damn, it feels good. It's like, feels like butter. I'm a, a pick aficionado or a, um, a pick junkie. I've got way too many picks that I don't even use, but at some point I, 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 I take them out and play around with them and learn to like them. This is the Golden Gate Stiff. It's a vibe thing. The feel puts me in a mood that makes me play a certain way. It's all mental. Uh, some other stuff. That's it. Let's answer some questions before I go. And then I'll throw my computer out the window. All right, what are you guys talking about? Sinister Guitar Picks, that's a brand I've never heard of. I will uh, check them out. Bobo Bohannon, what, how do you use your Vintage 47 suitcase amp? What pedals do you pair well with the amp? So the Vintage 47, which is that little suitcase tweedy thing, uh, it's like an eight watt amp. 
I haven't used it in a while, but I don't really put pedals in front of it. I just set it kind of in the middle or I'll crank it. And I think that's kind of how it was designed. Um, I feel like it was kind of designed just to be like a harmonica amp that guitar players got a hold of. Oh, 10 Solo, any updates on the comparison? No, I haven't reached out yet. I probably will, uh, I'll email in a couple weeks just to find out. But uh, he's, I know they're working because they're posting uh, pictures of their completed work on Instagram. So they're still alive and that's good. Absolute mayhem. What if you had a sharp pick then just rotated at 90 degrees and use the shoulder around it? Well, that's kind of how it all started. If you just got in the chat, I was talking about how some players like um, like to use the, the shoulder of the pick. And that's why, that's the reason why I bought these other picks. It was kind of to see if there was, you know, instead of just repurposing the other pick, get one that was kind of designed for that. And uh, it's similar, but it's not the same. Because, you know, when you when you rotate the uh, the pick 90 degrees, then you have this, um, a, you know, the, the pick is kind of, it doesn't feel equal because you have this long part of the pick that's, you know, closer to your hand. I don't know where my picks have gone. They all kind of fell. That's great. That's all right. Nothing's supposed to go right on this stream today anyways. But yeah, that's the reason why I bought them. All right, a couple more questions. Have I played the historic 60s Les Pauls? No, I haven't. If I bought Tyler Hall, if I bought a budget amp, what would you grab? It depends what you mean by budget amp. A budget tube amp or just a budget, you know, cheap amp? That's a tough one. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> That's a tough one. I'll have to think about that and maybe I'll talk about it in the next stream. All right, a couple more questions. Painkiller, regular slides are quite big for the pinky. What would you recommend for a better fit glass and brass? So, I mean, regardless of the size, I've I've used uh, any big slide on my pinky. A, a trick you can use is um, they make these uh, sticky felt pads that are made for, I think, furniture or something, or crafts, arts and crafts. If you go to like a you know a, a, a Michaels or a, you know Hobby Lobby or something. But um, they're these circular felt pads and you could actually stick them inside the slide to kind of tighten them up a little bit, which is what I used to do. Sometimes I would get like a big slide that didn't fit too well on my pinky and I would just kind of cushion the inside so it fit a little bit better. Mike Wentworth, are we going to be seeing a whole new series? Thank you so much for your super chat, by the way. Are we gonna be seeing a whole new series on you cleaning up your cables and soldering lessons? Uh, I was thinking about that. Probably not. I think, um, I don't know. To me, that would be boring, but maybe if you guys think that's interesting, I'll, I'll film it. Um, you can see how, how much I suck at soldering. And then maybe I'll do it a live stream so you can make fun of me live. Or I can get Mason Marangella coaching me while I uh, poorly solder cables. Would that be an interesting video? Let me know. Let me know down in the comments. By the way, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, you should. And that's all I got to say about that. <coughs> Tell a driver. Where is my thank you? Thank you, Tell a driver, for donating. Here's a tip for the tip jar, and I'll have to give the pick side a try. My 53rd birthday tomorrow. Con Happy birthday. Uh, just passing it along. Happy birthday, Mr. Telly Driver. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, everybody enjoy your weekend, too. Lucas Olankito. Last question. 
Any recommendations on best Marshall amp I should look into for using mostly home recording at home with my aux? Hmm. Really anything. It depends what kind of Marshall you're looking for. If you're looking for a modern sounding Marshall or like, you know, a plexi-ish thing or, or something, you know, more blues breakery. I really, I actually, I don't have, I have one Marshall and I haven't really demoed any of the new ones. I had a buddy that had a hand wired 18 watt Marshall that he used on the, on tour and it sounded amazing. Um, I'm sure it's not the, the cheapest Marshall you can get, but sonically that 18 watt Marshall head sounded really, really good. Um, so if you can find one, maybe they make a, a version that's not hand wired. That's not as expensive, but that one off the top of my head was one that I remember being really good. And it would, you know, 18 Watts, that'd be great for home recording. Um, and if you're going through an aux, it really, you know, you could go get a hundred watt Marshall, it'd be fine. But um, you don't really need all that power. So 18 watts would be a good uh, kind of range to go for. Helix is the best Marshall. Or you could just get a, a, a Lawrence Petros pedal and uh, go direct. Angus Clark is saying the 20 watt plexi style sounds great. Yeah, I would look for something 18, 20 watts. <clears throat> Everyone, don't forget to follow uh, Ben Coombs. Um, he's got his live stream tomorrow. And our friend Steve from Boston does his Saturday live stream tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's Boston time, y'all. Who else is streaming tonight? Uh, Robert Baker might be streaming later this afternoon. So make sure you follow all of my friends. Okay, guys. W one last question. Sorry. This was an important, this looks like an important question. <clears throat> my Secret Machine, they say the most important age for forming musical taste is around 14 and will last the rest of your life. Interesting. What was your favorite bands at that age? 14. Ah. This would have been, so the period between... Uh, uh, okay, so basically right when I started high school, what was I listening to? It was it was a really weird time because this would have been 1990 to 91. Um I was listening to you know guitar virtuoso stuff by Satriani, but I was also listening to jazz because I this is when I started taking jazz guitar lessons, private guitar lessons. Um so it was a really a mixture. You're probably right. At round 14 is when I started getting bombarded with all styles of music. Um, this was also the period where hair metal was still on top, but it was slowly transitioning into grunge. I want to say 91, uh, 92 is when I felt like grunge was, was getting into my, my space. But... Um, I was listening to Jeff Beck, Steve Ray Vaughan, a lot of guitar heavy stuff. Cause this is right. This is the period where I was really getting in more into guitars, like seriously. <clears throat> so jazz guitar, Wes Montgomery, uh, George Benson, John Schofield, Pat Metheny, and then Steve Vai, Joe Satriani. Um, I'm trying to think what else, you know, uh, shrapnel guys, uh, Greg Howe, Vinnie Moore, um, but then I think I, I, I feel like I got my first CD player around that time. I was late to the game getting like CDs and DVDs and all that stuff. So I think the first couple CDs I got were like Larry Carlton, uh, Steely Dan, I don't know why, 
And then a bunch of metal stuff. I can't remember. So I had my, I was all over the place when I was like 14, 15 with music. So I guess you're right. Yeah, Zeppelin, Clapton, Hendrix. Hendrix, of course. I was listening to lots of music. Van Halen, the early Van Halen stuff. I think that's when I started getting into like Van Halen 1 and, and Diver Down and Women and Children was around 14. <clears throat> Metallica. I think I, my Metallica face was more 12, 13. Um, I think by 14, 15 is when I started li listening to less metal. So anyways, good question. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I appreciate all your, your questions and your super chats. Uh, sorry, my, my live stream wasn't as good as it could have been. And that's uh, the fault of Apple. I don't think it's the fault of Ecamm software. I think it's Apple. It's my computer. So I don't know what we're gonna do. We'll see if it works, cause I still got work to do. Videos to edit, music to record. And uh, if it doesn't happen today, if it doesn't work today, I might have to go to the uh, Apple store and buy something. <laughs> I don't wanna buy a new computer right now. But anyways, Thanks for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be kind and be safe. Uh, I think our buddy Joey Coy needs to say something.